When I used to think about my favourite story told within the shonen genre, I recalled great sagas like the Chunin exams from Naruto, Marine Ford from One Piece, the Soul Society arc within Bleach, and the Cell Saga from Dragon Ball Z. My standards for what I expected from storytelling were never really elevated, they were constantly met with equally great stories, that is until I finally jumped onto the Hunter x Hunter bandwagon a few years after the 2011 anime concluded. I loved many things about the show, and honestly didn't expect it to change how I view shonen stories arcs, but when I reached the Kimura Ant arc, it literally changed my whole perception of a great shonen story. In this video, I want to explain why the Kimura Ant arc is my favourite story told within Shonen Jump, and what exactly made it feel so different, unique and innovative. Before the video begins, remember to subscribe and turn on notifications to not miss any of my future uploads. The Kimura Ant arc ran from episode 76 to 136 of the Hunter x Hunter 2011 anime. It did not receive an anime adaptation in the prior Hunter x Hunter 1999 series, due to the infamous nature of the manga author Yoshihiro Togashi going on hiatus. This arc was told from chapter 186 until 318. Togashi began this arc in October 2003 and finally concluded it in October. October 2011, a total of 8 long years. It really is no wonder that people have dubbed Hunter x Hunter as Hiatus x Hiatus. Despite this, it's an undisputed fact that the material that we do get from Tagashi is some of the best examples of elevating shonen storytelling that we have seen. I want to share my experience of when I realised my expectations pulled beneath my feet during my first watch of the Kimura Ant arc. Let's see what made this arc feel so innovative through the threat introduced by the villains, the stakes placed upon the world, and the effects on the characters we have come to know and love up until this point, and lastly how all of these different elements culminate into one of the best character arcs I have seen unfold in anime. The best way to begin this analysis is with the characters that are introduced into this arc. A new species of dangerous insect is a threat that is posed here. They are assigned as a B-level threat by the Hunter Association. This newly introduced species is the Kimura Ants. These humanoid creatures inflict grievous bodily harm upon their victims as they devour their prey and reproduce offspring which present with differing characteristics of the species that they have just consumed. This reproductive process is described as phagogenesis. What made me feel so intrigued by the world of Hunter x Hunter was how, despite the threat that the Chimera Ants posed on the world, they were not a rank A level threat. The Chimera Ants we later learn arrived from the Dark Continent, an unexplored forbidden area of the Hunter x Hunter world. To add to the intrigue of the Dark Continent, it is said that humanity encountered five great calamities during their different expeditions to this continent. All five are different species which pose a threat higher than the B level that the Chimera Ants had been assigned. I illustrate this to show the world building and the feeling of utter mystery that Hunter x Hunter does so well to convey. It is similar to One Piece as it reminds me of how Ishida Oda introduces and builds up the new world. During this arc in Hunter x Hunter we have a teaser to the five great calamities. This appetizer comes in the form of the Chimera Ants. The queen of the Chimera Ants arrives from the Dark Continent and begins to crave human flesh after consuming them and through phagogenesis she produces offspring which inherit traits from their prior lives. It is a truly disturbing and sickening concept. I remember when Kite explained the threat of the Chimera Ants to Gon and Killua. I couldn't help but to feel a sensation of fear. This feeling remained with me throughout the entirety of this arc. The whole tone and mood of the series had shifted and felt like I was watching a different anime once the ants had been introduced. It is contrasted heavily with the previous Greed Island arc which feels light hearted in comparison to this arc. The aim of the Queen Chimera Ant is to give birth to her three royal guards and her king so that they can dominate the world. For this goal to be accomplished, she requires her soldiers to source high quality humans for her to feast upon. With each new generation of ants that the queen gives birth to, their intellect increases, and thus they realise that humans with Nen ability provide greater nourishment and will hasten the arrival of the king and his guards. I love the growth of the queen ant and her soldiers in the early episodes of this arc, as they quickly learn about Nen, demonstrating growth in strength, power and intellect. It felt like a race against time to stop this species before it was too late as they were developing in my opinion at an alarming rate. Once the king called Meruem is born, he becomes the main antagonist of this arc. This powerful humanoid has a perfectly toned muscular structure, accompanied by a powerful tail which is topped off with a stinger, which he frequently uses as a weapon. Meruem is born as a cruel and brutal ruler, which is aligned with the queen's desire to give birth to a perfect king. He believes himself to be the greatest form of life, superseding all other life forms. His apathy is displayed first hand when he pays no concern towards his mother, who appears to be 
dying after giving birth to him. Leading up to his introduction, we had been hyped to see him for the longest time. The expectations we come to have in my opinion are perfectly matched when Meruem is revealed. He oozes an aura of sinister malice. He also gives off this impression through his subtle nature to kill anyone disobedient to him, that he has an incredible strength and power which is laying dormant within him. The terror and threat that he posed to the world was exciting to witness. I believe him to be the most perfect shonen antagonist. Meruem is accompanied by his three royal guards called Poof, Up, and Pito. They are given the responsibility to safeguard the king at all costs. The royal guards are stronger than any of the other ants and were born with the ability to use Nen. They require this great strength so that they can protect the king by fighting his enemies and fulfilling his every desire. They were born as a result of the queen chimera ant devouring hundreds of humans, including those who could use Nen abilities, causing the birth of the three gifted royal guards. The three of them helped the king to fulfill the goal that the queen imprinted into their biological makeup, the goal to dominate the world. They are loyal to the plans laid out by the queen, but they show no empathy or consideration towards her when the queen chimera ant is dying. Despite having the power to heal her, they leave her to die. Carrying out the plan of world domination proves to become very difficult as Meruem eventually detours from the queen's original plans and begins to have a change of heart. This is one of the key story beats featured within this arc. I will cover this extensively later, as the growth of Meruem and his detachment from the goals of his mother and his royal guards is one of the many examples of great character development and storytelling within this arc. Each of the royal guards have their own distinct abilities, personality and appearance. Puff is the most calm and level-headed of the three royal guards. However, he does have an intense devotion to the king, which can cause his judgement to become clouded. He holds himself to a standard of ideals, and failing to not meet these ideals are never an option for Puff. As a character, he truly was limited by his own perfect imaginings of himself, the king and the world around him. He truly believes the king to be the peak of evolution, and the only being worthy of dominating the world. This mental image of the king is what Puff holds dear to. When the king himself fails to live up to this ideal mental version that Puff has constructed, it causes him to become irrational and behave of his own accord, believing that what he is doing is the best for the king. However, Puff becomes loyal to his own ideal version of the king, and not Meruem himself, who is the individual behind the royal label. Puff also becomes enraged in private when the king would not change to match his expectations, going as far as to act of his own accord out of devotion to preserve his mental image of the king, and to help this version of the king to come into fruition. Yupi is the most simple of the three royal guards. He possesses a great deal of strength with very little knowledge of self-identity or ego. This allows him to remain dedicated to his duty to save the king. Due to not letting his mind be preoccupied by unnecessary thoughts, he is able to focus on his instincts and react without any hesitation. In comparison to the other two guards, Yupi refrained from partaking in eccentric personality-defining behaviours, which would often leave him feeling confused after observing Pito and Puff exhibit such distinctive individual personalities. It was a great contrast. Despite feeling like a blank slate, Yupi's naivety, lack of care for his own desires, aided in him being the perfect controlled comparison to his fellow guards. Yupi does however begin to grow as a character while he battles with the other hunters during the palace invasion. He becomes more cunning, thankful to his enemies and even goes as far as to spare their lives, demonstrating his capacity to show mercy to his opponents. Pito is the final member of the royal guard. She is a cat-like chimera ant. Her behaviours are very similar to a feline as she plays with her prey and she has a tendency to become distracted and curious, causing her to often get carried away while battling her opponents. Despite having a very playful nature, she has a terrifying counter personality, which results in her showing her cruelty through her evil, sinister acts. Her actions cause Gon and Killua to feel completely powerless and face the harsh reality of being unable to protect someone close to them. Pito was responsible for Gon's development, growth and even regression during this arc. In the Hunter x Hunter anime, we are introduced to Kite, who is the student of Gin Freaks, Gon's father. In the manga, Kite is one of the first characters that we meet during the introduction of the series, as we see him save a young Gon from an attack by a mother fox bear who was protecting her cub. We see Kite scold Gon, as his naivety has resulted in Kite being forced to kill the fox bear due to Gon's life being in danger. Kite recognises that this boy is Gin's son. He then informs him that his father is still alive, and states that the search to find his father would be an incredibly difficult one. Unfortunately, this key introduction and even beginning of the series is missed out in the 2011 anime. I think that this entire scene helps the audience to understand Gon's purpose, as well as understanding what a hunter actually is. As we see an example of a hunter via Kite, we understand the meaning behind this title and the concept through his introduction. We are also teased about the struggles that Gon may face in regards to how difficult it will be for him to find his father, and to fulfil his desire to become a great hunter. Sadly, instead of this flashback being shown in the first episode of the 2011 
anime, we learn about these events via a flashback when Gon first meets Kite during the beginning of the Chimera Ant arc. It robs the excitement from the viewer who doesn't get to completely appreciate the relationship between Gon and Kite. It definitely would have been a more impactful reunion if the anime followed the manga more closely. The comparison between Kite and Shanks from One Piece has also been made previously and is even more glaring when you learn that they are voiced by the same voice actor. When you consider the impact of Kite's involvement on Gon's development, you can draw a similar comparison to the impact of Shanks on Luffy and his determination to become the Pirate King. Kite, similar to Shanks, also ends up losing an arm while he protects Gon from the royal guard Pito. The involvement of Kite during this arc drew me in from the very beginning as he is hunting down a lead to a supposed Queen Chimera Ant. While he describes their species, we learn about how much of a disturbing threat that they pose upon the world. Kite has a very stoic personality and upon first inspection, he appears to be apathetic and blunt with his words, causing him to come across as being rude or inconsiderate. But in fact, he is caring and compassionate towards his comrades and he values the gift of life greatly. We see his consideration for life when he scolds a young Gon for leaving him with no choice but to kill the fox bear who endangered his life. He even warns Killua and Gon multiple times before they embark on their journey to find the Chimera Ants about the dangers which lay up ahead. The situation was unprecedented, they had no idea what they would be up against. It caused Kite to obviously feel cautious and concerned for their safety. He even ends up underestimating just how talented and skilled Gon and Killua are, but they remind Kite that they are pro hunters after all and that they can handle what lays ahead. Kite's fate is incredibly tragic and I will go into it in further detail later on and how it impacts Gon and consequently even Killua. The protagonist of the series Gon is a cheerful, naive, adventure-seeking young boy. Similar to other shonen protagonists, he's very simple and narrow-minded. He desires to become a great hunter so that he can understand every aspect of the profession, allowing him to gain some understanding as to why his father chose to pursue being a great hunter rather than staying with and raising a son. Gon is incredibly talented and rises to any occasion when he is presented with a challenge or an adversary. However, his temperament and tendency to give in to his impulses cause him to come to terms with his limitations, which consequently lead to him feeling pain and sadness. During the Chimera Ant arc, Gon undergoes intense emotional pain, which transforms his personality, causing him to become cold-hearted and vengeful as he seeks to avenge the death of his mentor Kite. Killua, who is Gon's best friend, undergoes many changes during this arc, including overcoming his fear of opponents who are stronger than himself. We see Killua grow immensely in this arc as he suffers a great deal due to his attachment to Gon, how he silently helps him while feeling pain, due to his friend feeling troubled and upset. Killua shows a great deal of empathy and compassion. He learns to suppress his bloodthirsty, ruthless nature as he grows closer to Gon and spends more time with him, which consequently makes him become more humanized. Killua is incredibly nuanced and his growth is displayed during this arc as we see him mature a great deal through controlling his emotions and behaviors in response to several distressing situations which occur. His rational and logical thinking saved not only his life but even Gon's, who loses his senses and gives in to his rage when Pito attacks Kite, causing him to lose his arm. This powerful scene shows the contrasting nature of the two friends, as Gon furiously gives in to his anger while Killua is forced to knock him unconscious and flee for safety as per Kite's wishes. Kite chooses to face Pito while letting the boys get away. Kite even commends Killua for his quick rational thinking, as he determined very quickly the incredibly monstrous power of Pito. Realizing the vast difference between their powers, he knew that if they were to have stayed with Kite, then all three of them would have been killed. Huntrax Hunter features some of the most nuanced and rich characters within any shonen series. I could talk about several of the Chimera Ants, as well as the members of the Chimera Ant extermination team, which include Isaac Netero, Morel, Nov, Knuckle, and Shoot. However, this video would go on for far too long, and I think I've covered enough characters to now begin to analyze the events which begin to unfold around them during this arc. After learning about reports of humans being attacked by Chimera Ants in the NGL area, Kite decides to investigate in an attempt to stop the spread of this dangerous species. By locating the Queen Chimera Ant, Kite displays his compassion for human life by stating that the Chimera Ants may well have begun hunting humans to feast upon. His priority is to save the people from being devoured. As a result, he may not be able to entirely help Gon and Killua if they were to get into danger. Out of concern for the well-being of Gon and Killua, he demands that they must be able to protect themselves if they wish to come with him to the NGL. The two of them understand and agree to this requirement, while Kite foreshadows that if anything were to happen to him, then they should prioritize their own safety by leaving him behind to escape. It is evident that Kite is fearing for the worst. As I said previously, it is an unprecedented situation. I initially thought that he was underestimating Gon and Killua, as even I thought that they would be more than capable to assist Kite even if he were to get into danger. Despite them being very young, they are pro hunters and have demonstrated their skills and talents throughout the series. But it would seem that in this 
situation, they got in way over their head. The two of them are fairly confident in their own abilities and agree to help Kite, insisting that they can handle themselves, but we soon learn the harsh reality of failing to back up your words by your actions. Due to realizations of powerlessness, which are coupled with terror-inducing feelings of hopelessness, these two emotions are more than enough to silence anyone's spirit and confidence. Arriving in the NGL, they quickly discover disturbing evidence to suggest the Chimera ants have begun mauling and eating humans. Following the trail of dead bodies, they quickly discover their first Chimera ant soldier, called Ramot. Kite, continuing to side with caution, suggests that the two boys defeat the Chimera ant while he observes them. With this being the first of many to come, Kite gives the boys an opportunity to prove themselves during this battle. Not just taking their word for it, he wants to see them demonstrate that they can handle themselves. He continues to remind them that he will not always be there to help them, very evidently coming across as slightly condescending and making Gon and Killua even feel like they are being underestimated. As he continues to tell them if they cannot defeat this lone soldier, then they will have to leave. Overconfidently, the two boys flaunt their title as pro hunters and demand that he does not treat them like little children, before totally defeating the Chimera Ant. I felt on the edge of my seat wondering when this threat that was causing Kite to feel so cautious would emerge. During the battle, the Chimera Ant was gaining the upper hand and it wasn't until Gon and Killua used Nen, which turned the tables in their favour and caused them to defeat Ramot. During their journey to the ant's nest, they continue to face several Chimera ants and defeat them with ease. The purpose of the Chimera ants is to gather high quality humans to provide the queen with nourishment so that she can give birth to the king as soon as possible. Now the ants who were produced by Phagogenesis appear to have naturally adopted the human personality traits of egotism, individuality and greed. The ants begin to act of their own accord, wanting to gain more power, control and ultimately dominance. These traits first emerged when the ants began to compete with each other, comparing whose squadron had brought the most humans for the queen. They begin to deter from the queen's plans, instead wanting to eat humans for themselves, and even some wanting to keep them as pets, or for torture. It is interesting, as the Chimera ants are a mixture of animals and humans. For the most part, humans have done a great deal to harm animals, through destroying their habitats, keeping them in barbaric slaughterhouses, and consuming their flesh, with little regard as to how the animal was treated before it died. Through this piece of fiction, we see these very animals gain sentient life, crossbreeded with the very traits which bring out the worst in people. Animals who in their past life who were tortured or forced to experience it are mixed with humans who have the capacity to inflict pain onto others, all for the constant thirst for more, so that they can try to fill a void of inadequacy which is amplified by their own egos. So it is no surprise when we see the ants want to dominate the world of humans, and even go as far as to keep them chained up as pets. This arc comments on the human condition through the Chimera ants, and we get more of this as the arc progresses. As Gon, Killua and Kite near the Queen's Nest, they trigger Neferpito's N, which allows her to feel their presence. She wastes little time by arriving and immediately cutting Kite's arm off, as he yells for Gon and Killua to escape. Gon reacts with fury and screams, building his power but Killua knocks him out cold, heeding Kite's plea for them to escape. Kite commends Killua for realising their limitations, and how little help they would be if they remained with him. So instead of being a hindrance, Killua carries the incapacitated Gon and flees, leaving Kite behind to battle Pito. I get such a chilling sensation when I see Killua running away carrying Gon. As he mutters to himself, we were overconfident repeatedly. Killua feeling Pito's incredibly malicious Nen, realised instantly that even Kite was utterly outmatched. We were fools is a quote that really stays with me from this portion of the story. To utterly know when you have been bested, how very little your efforts up until now meant. To taste the cold harsh reality of life. This series draws so many parallels to our own existence. This isn't a shonen story where the protagonist somehow wins through the power of friendship or a miraculous inconsequential power up. Hunter x Hunter literally just rendered Gon and Killua useless in this singular moment. You cannot help but to think back to when they reassured Kite by naively stating that they were pro hunters and requested for him to not treat them like little kids. They foolishly had no idea of the threat that an experienced hunter like Kite was anticipating all along. Now Killua flees with regret, knowing that Kite has just sacrificed himself so that they could escape, knowing that if they weren't accompanying him, then he may have been able to escape and avoided a confrontation with Pito. As the three pro hunters Isaac Netero, Morel, and Nov arrive. They order Killua to leave, while they go forward to destroy the ants. Killua, however, after feeding Pito's Nen, claims that in terms of pure strength, the three of them would not be enough to defeat her. If this was a typical shonen, then that would have been the end of the conversation. However, by tactically applying your Nen and outsmarting your opponent, it results in a level of uncertainty which rules out strength and power as the only determining factors for victory. The three pro hunters remind Killua of this before they head to the NGL, an area gone on Killua 
Kalawa are now no longer experienced enough to enter. Netero insists that the two of them must prove themselves to be worthy before returning to assist them. They are ordered to defeat Morel's two assassin apprentices within a time limit of a month if they are to be deemed worthy enough to assist in defeating the ants. When Gon finally regains consciousness, he thanks Killua for saving him. He agrees that if they stayed with Kite, then they would have only gotten in his way. Gon then displays his innocent, naive nature by stating with so much bright-eyed optimism that Kite is still alive, further elaborating that he managed to escape and is now in hiding. Gon sets his determination on gaining more strength so that he may be able to return to rescue Kite. The beauty of Killua and Gon is their contrasting personalities, experiences, and the most relevant for this situation is their contrasting maturity. Kite was killed by Pito, and Killua is all too aware of this fact, yet he watches the hopeful Gon state otherwise. He says it perfectly himself. Sometimes Gon shines so brightly it is hard to look away. Killua doesn't have the heart to tell Gon otherwise. He cannot bring himself to speak the reality of the situation. He cannot shatter Gon's spirit. I am always hit with a heavy heart when I see the jaw-dropping Killua staring at Gon's innocence. He even questions whether it is selfish of him to stay with Gon, as Gon appears to retain so much of the childish innocence Killua was robbed of as a child. It is as though he is comforted by the cruel realities of the world by Gon's positivity, describing him as a light, which shines abundantly onto Killua's outlook of the world. When Gon finally confronts Pito later on in the arc, we see a vastly different version of himself. His resolve is to restore Kite, who we previously discovered as a lifeless training dummy, while also resolving to defeat Neferpito. Gon feels an incredible sense of regret and is unable to forgive himself for Kite's current physical state. It is an unimaginable scale of regret for not being able to prevent Pito from doing this to Kite. We can truly see the sadness, anger and guilt in Gon's words and actions. He is in a state of denial as he is refusing to accept Kite has died. He goes from we need to rescue Kite to we need to heal Kite after seeing his lifeless body. His change of mindset caused by his denial keeps his mind stable. When the palace invasion begins, Gon becomes narrow-minded, concentrated and merciless. He is totally focused on his desire to restore Kite and defeat Pito. Gon confronts her finally as she is using her Nen ability, Dr. Blythe, to heal Komugi. Gon furiously questions how she could be healing this girl when she murdered Kite without any remorse. Out of duty for Miroem, she is healing Komugi, but Gon is so enraged and blinded by his anger, it is Killua who reasons with him to not attack Pito while she is defenseless, as she is the only one who is able to restore Kite. He eventually orders Pito to come with him to heal Kite, after her one hour time limit to heal Komugi is up. When Pito receives a call from Puff stating that Komugi is safe. She then feels like she has nothing to lose. No longer in a situation where she is held hostage or being forced to follow orders, she reveals that Kite was indeed killed by her. In his current condition, there is nothing that can be done to restore him. Pito's Nen ability can only prevent a corpse from deteriorating. It does not have the power to bring the dead back to life. Gon utterly succumbs to his despair. We see this immediately as his eyes become hollow upon this revelation. The truth Gon didn't want to accept and refuse to consider is crushingly presented to him. The bright eyed protagonist is devastated by Pito's words. He weeps for Kite. Pito confirms that his soul is no longer in this world, so consequently there is no way to heal him. The cold-hearted Pito apologises to Gon. She even feels for his loss due to Gon's helplessness, which is so evident it's unbearable to see. Guilt, grief and sadness is what Gon feels. Regret that he accompanied Kite to investigate NGL, feeling like it was his fault Kite was killed, due to him being distracted by protecting Gon and Killua. He is conflicted as he argues with himself who is responsible for Kite's death, switching between himself by feeling guilt and then anger as he directs that towards Pito for being the one who murdered Kite. Gon has lost his sanity and understandably cannot be reasoned with. He is so utterly lost in his emotions as we see a flashback of Gon reassuring Killua that there is no way that Kite will be defeated. Gon's breakdown is the result of shining too brightly, being too optimistic and ignoring the cruelty of the world. Most shonen series don't ever let the protagonist be utterly crushed. They protect their worldview and keep them safe from cruelty through unrealistic optimism and positive attitude. There is no hope in Gon's situation. The hope that remained is ripped from his heart. What is left is a broken character that is repeating to himself, Kite is dead. Realising his worst fear has come to be true, Gon had literally deluded himself into thinking Pito could heal Kite. He clung to this fantasy. Heartbreakingly, he asks for help for anyone to help him in his hopelessness, as he knows there is nothing he can do for Kite. Tears flowing down his face as Pito summons Dr. Blythe, he looks at her with his last shred of light that remains, as though it is 
is his final piece of hope. Maybe Pito has summoned her Nen ability to try and assist Gon. She may attempt to indeed heal Kite. She may feel sorry for him, like we do after seeing his breakdown. He thinks Pito is going to help Kite. He begins to lie to himself again, falsely reassuring himself maybe Kite wasn't dead. This final bit of hope takes over his reasoning and logical thinking. The protagonist we begin this journey with, the character who came into this arc with so much innocence, happiness and positivity, is dismantled thoroughly here. What saddens me is for how long Gon is made to suffer, one blow after another, as we see Pito use her ability Dr. Blythe to heal herself. The level of heartlessness and cruelty she displays by doing this in front of a mourning Gon. Do sentient beings really possess the capacity to blatantly disregard others' feelings and emotions to this extent? I sometimes wonder if this even happens in our reality, but then I get reminded that of course the harsh truth of life is that there are such people who care so little for others' feelings. The truest depiction of a monster for me is someone who inflicts cruelty onto others while only caring for their own well-being, disregarding the feelings of others like they don't exist. Pito demonstrates how much of a monster she really is here. The only thing Gon feels he can do now is to defeat Pito. This is the only way he can deal with his emotions of sadness, anger, regret and grief. To gain the power to defeat Pito, Gon sacrifices everything. He doesn't care if he dies here. Gon gives up his life, his future, his potential, all to gain the power in this singular moment to defeat the one who has made him lose faith in the world. Gon's transformation grants him with power that is strong enough to rival Meruem. The cost to gain this strength was far more than what a boy, even as talented as Gon could possibly handle. You have to understand the weight of this transformation. Gon gives up his desire to meet Gin, which was his life's dream, his bonds and friendships he has formed with Killua, Kurapika, Leorio and everyone, even sacrificing his very existence to gain this power. He does all of this within a split second. Pito is then brutally defeated by Gon, as she realises that Gon sacrificed his entire life energy and thus his potential to grow up to become a threat to Meruem. She understands that Gon has given up his ability to use Nen. All of his talent and potential was exchanged to perform this miraculous feat. Killua who rushes to Gon witnesses his close friend distinguish all of his light and fall into utter darkness. Killua watches Gon who is covered in Pito's blood repeatedly crush his fist into her skull, attacking her already shattered body. He does this until nothing remains of her head. Killua comes to understand the extent of what Gon must have given up to transform. Pito's body strikes Gon even after death due to her intense devotion to the king. Her Nen controls her corpse to strike Gon. Having lost his arm, Gon quietly tells Killua that he isn't in any pain. He even feels glad that he could feel the same pain Kite did after losing his arm, feeling he has redeemed himself through having suffered slightly. What breaks my heart is how he tells a concerned Killua that he is okay, while having such a somber, sad expression on his face. It pains me to see Gon lie to himself and Killua like this. He then destroys Pito's corpse as Gon demonstrates how far he has drifted from his prior light description of himself. What must Killua be feeling to see the light of his world, his closest friend, sink into darkness, a feeling he knows all too well? Gon is the one who saved Killua from the torment and pain he suffered throughout his childhood. He showed him another side to life. What we witness at the conclusion of this battle is Killua unable to do the same for Gon. He wasn't able to save him from falling into darkness. I cannot recall if there is another shonen series which leaves you feeling anything but excited at the protagonist defeating the villain. Usually the hero powers up and heroically defeats the villain, as it is a moment of celebration and relief, but Pito's defeat is so empty. I feel so much regret for Gon due to everything he sacrificed. I even feel some remorse for Pito, who instinctively was serving the king until her dying breath. She was becoming ever so slightly humanised also, as she even apologised to Gon previously. Nobody deserves to be brutally killed the way that Pito was. Hunter x Hunter sets itself apart from other series by making you feel just how unrealistic it was for Gon to defeat Pito. This indeed ended up being true, due to the large price that had to be paid to accomplish such a feat. There is an incredible consequence for accomplishing such an incredible task. Killua watching Gon attack Pito's body while crying just sums up this moment entirely. This is anything but a victory. Gon loses his humanity and Killua is helpless to do anything for him. Through Gon's character we see what it means to sink into darkness, shown through Gon losing his inner light as he is exposed to the harsh cruel truths of the world. On the opposite end of the spectrum our antagonist Meruem undergoes a similar journey but is faced with change through the bond that he forms with a girl called Komugi. Meruem is the most powerful Chimera Ant, birthed by the Queen. Ruling over the Chimera Ants, he is the antagonist of this arc. I previously stated that he was the best shonen antagonist. This is due to the way that he is written, and the character arc that he undergoes. Meruem is born only knowing that he is the king, and it is his right to dominate the world. Other than this, he is figuratively a blank slate, like a newborn baby entering into the world, yet to form opinions or views on the surrounding environment. Due to his desire to dominate the world, he believes himself to be the most superior life form, 
showing no empathy for those weaker than him. He even devoured a child's flesh and spat it out, stating it is terrible compared to the feeling he had when he was nourished with Nen users in his mother's womb. Merwin was opposed to the structure of human society, voicing his opposition to the idea of people ruling over others due to their bloodlines or birthrights. He found it to be illogical and against the laws of nature to not have the most powerful rule over the weak. He eventually learns that there are great inequalities within human society. He observes that weak children are allowed to starve while weak-minded leaders and fortunate individuals eat with a plentiful supply of food. He was especially disgusted by their greed and fear. Merwin questions the way that humans live. He is especially confused by their contradictions. After visiting a king and learning about humans allowing the weak to rule over them, he kills the king while his dancers beg for their lives. Lives. Miriam questions them, asking if they showed any mercy to the cattle or animals that they slaughter daily to feast upon. Due to his disgust for humanity, he decides to restrict their freedoms and make them endure pain and suffering due to their idiotic customs and greedy selfishness. Out of boredom, Miriam begins to learn different board games and one by one masters each of them and defeats the world champions for all the games that he masters. That is until he learns a game called Gungi and begins to challenge the world Gungi champion called Komugi. She is clumsy, quiet, and rather childish. Her personality is very simple-minded and she tends to speak too much and comes across as disrespectful due to speaking informally. She has lost her eyesight so is unable to play Gungi without someone speaking the positions out on the board for her. Komugi defeats Meruem very easily as her whole attitude and demeanour changes while she plays Gungi. Despite Meruem studying the rules more and improving, he is still unable to defeat her. Meruem becomes obsessed with their games. He forgets to eat and even begins to use Komugi's own tactics against her, but she still counters them with ease. Meruem eventually offers Komugi a wager for their next game, telling her that if she she wins, then he will give her anything that she desires. However, if she loses, Meruem has requested to take her left arm. However, Komugi contemplates the offer and instead tells the king that she will place her life on the line should she lose. She offers her life up due to stating that Gungi is the only thing that she has focused upon. Should she lose, then her life would be rendered useless. Meruem surprisingly laughs at her response due to being surprised by Komugi's offer of her life. He then tears his own left arm off as an apology to her, but cut him until he treats himself. Even with Meruem threatening to kill her if she doesn't play, she still refuses and tells him that he should instead try to kill her in a game of Gungi. Meruem accepts her terms and has Puff heal his left arm for him. Strangely enough, this is the first person that we see who isn't afraid of Meruem, who can voice their opinion against him and doesn't succumb to his fear tactics. Despite ordering that he will play Gungi with her without any breaks until she is defeated, he allows her to rest once he can see that she is exhausted. Exhausted. His reasoning being that he would not consider it to be a fair victory if he defeated her while she was tired. Komugi exchanges tips with Meruem and helps him to improve his technique, all the while she improves at an alarming rate also. Due to playing Gungi continuously with Meruem, she eventually awakens her Nen, realising that her ability is to improve in Gungi, as she sees various tactics and moves play out in her mind. Komugi while resting is attacked by a bird, but she does not yell out in pain or request for help. Meruem who enters her room to find her being attacked kills the bird. She is concerned about troubling Meruem, but he states that she is an important guest. Meruem at this point begins to develop feelings for her that he cannot begin to explain. He even orders Pito to watch over her and to protect her from now on. Due to boredom, the king begins to play board games and develops feelings for Komugi. Unintentionally, he diverts his attention from his main goal of world conquest and focuses his efforts on defeating Komugi. Through Komugi, Meruem changes his initial perception of humans and learns that there is more to them than meets the eye. He further elaborates upon his changed perception through his battle with Netero. When you consider what the Chimera Ants did, you feel a sense of disgust, hatred and apathy towards them. But how is it that Hunter x Hunter can make you care for a character like Meruem, who in his introduction ate the flesh of a child? It is maddening to even consider such a character could become reformed or have a change of heart. Meruem was pure evil when he was born, but throughout human history, they too have inflicted travesty onto their own kind. The Chimera Ants were born without any other feelings we grow up and develop. They are newborn babies taking the form of fully developed sentient beings. Humans grow up with several people that they develop feelings for and care about. These feelings of love and hatred that develop are the very reasons as to why humans are so perfectly flawed. The ants behaved with such inconsideration, lack of empathy and pure malice due to lacking human emotions, but that does not mean that they were incapable of learning them through relationships and experiences. When Miriam develops feelings for Komugi, this causes him to become more humanized. Through the influence of one girl who had assumed her entire existence was meaningless, the perception of the king 
king was changed. Like I said previously, I feel like this arc is a great discussion on the human condition. When Miriam battles Netero, Miriam speaks about his changed perception and new outlook on humanity. He tells Netero that he no longer considers humans to be livestock or a source of food. He is even allowing him to live by letting him surrender. Convincingly, Meruem even tries to reason with Netero, questioning why he wants to fight him despite knowing that he is going to lose, stating that if he is doing this for the betterment of mankind, then he should join Meruem and his plans to rid the world of inequality and injustice. Meruem surprisingly comes to the conclusion that power should be used to serve and protect the weak who deserve to live. He deems people worthy of living to be individuals like Komugi and even Netero himself. The king sits on the ground and wishes to not resolve this conflict through the exchange of fists. He would rather talk to Netero about their differences. The chairman, however tempted by this offer, chooses to follow his duty to the Hunter Association and attacks Meruem. The Hunter Association was fully aware that Netero was no match for Meruem. However, they knew that once Netero was killed, the nuclear weapon would be activated, thus killing the ants and the surrounding hunters. If Meruem did not suggest to fight elsewhere, then the innocent people in the area would all have died. The Hunter Association deems that this mass killing would be justified as long as the ants were killed also. This is another example of how humanity could stoop to lows equally as low as the Chimera ants. At least the ants have an excuse of never having learnt emotions or experienced feelings through relationships, but what is our excuse? After his battle with Netero, Meruem began to understand the true nature of humans, even beginning to admire their determination, especially as he learns about Netero and his commitment to his training, how the chairman practiced the same move for years on end, a feat that no ordinary person could accomplish. After this, he believes that he was wrong to impose his belief system onto others. He realises he has no right to try and rid the world of inequality. He no longer wishes to needlessly kill people he deems unworthy, as each person has the ability to possess great potential. Meruem eventually dies due to the poison released from the poor man's rose that Netero had detonated upon his death. In his final moments, he chooses to spend them with Komugi. His final wish is to play one last game of Gungi with her, as he finally tells her his name. Komugi chooses to stay with Meruem despite knowing the poison radiating from his body would kill her too, emphasising the strong bond that the two of them are formed as they choose to spend their final moments with each other. Meruem, who is the strongest character within the Huntrex Hunter universe, acknowledges the strengths of humans, even admiring them. He does this through the influence of someone as weak as Komugi. He understands about what it feels like to express compassion, empathy and concern for others. Through his failure to defeat Komugi and the bond that he forms with her, he develops compassion and empathy for her. Through Netero, he comes to understand the great potential that humans possess, how each person can attain unheard of heights through surpassing their own limitations. Through this, he begins to understand the value of life. It is impressive writing on Togashi's part to write a character who is not at the mercy of the events of the story. As an antagonist, Meruem does not fulfil the role assigned to him. His character arc excels the typical cliché of shonen tropes, as he is written with more depth than a villain set out to conquer the world. Our expectations are swept from beneath us, as we see a villain embraces humanity and learn to acknowledge the very people he attempted to dominate. It is so easy to speak at length about the story and characters of Hunter x Hunter. They are so well written and nuanced. Initially, I intended this video to be half of the length that it ended up being, but even at over 40 minutes in length, I feel like there are so many things I have not even mentioned or glanced over. Characters like Nov, Morel, Knuckle, Netero or the Royal Guards, how they grow and develop during this arc, I would love to discuss them in the future depending on how well this video is received. My focus focus was to explain how the Chimera Ant arc is the best shonen story ever told. Throughout the arc there is no shortage of subversions, how Gon gives in to his intense desire for revenge and eventually exchanges everything to become a monster, or how Meruem learns to acknowledge humans through his love for a girl who taught him how to feel emotions. This arc features parallels to our reality as it comments on humanity and the frightening discussion of how similar we are to the monsters we are fearful of. It is a compelling commentary on humanity's contradictions, especially referencing the lengths that they will go to so that they can ensure their own survival. For example, we can draw parallels to a poor man's rose and the atomic bomb, which both are products of humanity's desire to survive and prove their dominance by devastating perceived enemies or threats. Just as the themes which are featured within this arc are given the respect that they deserve, the relationships between characters are also advanced into new levels of growth. Gon and Killua's bond is literally put to the ultimate test, as Killua is made to confront the weakness of their bond, how he has become reliant on Gon's light, and feels responsible for keeping it alight. Their relationship is pushed to its ultimate climax as Killua is unable to protect Gon from losing his light, thus leading directly to the characters naturally parting ways, progressing to their next stage of growth, to grow as individuals who no longer rely upon each other. I hope that this video has done justice to Hunter x Hunter in the way that the characters, themes and events have been analysed and discussed. Do you love this arc and think it is
is the most rich and nuanced story told within Shonen Jump, or do you think there are better stories out there that rival the greatness of Hunter x Hunter? Let me know your thoughts by leaving a comment on this video.